Welcome to Serengeti National Park. Our focus in this video is on the avian species of this realm. The first bird seen here is one of the most famous and iconic of all of Sub-Saharan Africa, the lilac-breasted roller. This species is an African bird of the roller family, Coraceidae. It is widely distributed in Sub-Saharan Africa and is a vagrant to the Southern Arabian Peninsula. During open woodland and savanna, it is for the most part absent from treeless places. Usually occurring alone or in pairs, it perches conspicuously at the tops of trees, poles, or other high vantage points. Nesting takes place in a natural hole in a tree where a clutch of two to four eggs are laid. These are incubated by both parents, who are extremely aggressive in defending their nest. In doing so, they will even take on raptors. Perhaps the most iconic bird of all of the African continent is the massive, conspicuous, flightless bird with long neck and robust legs known as the common ostrich. Ostriches are the largest and heaviest birds in the world. Due to their great weight and diminutive wings, they are flightless and therefore cannot take to the skies. Instead, ostriches are great runners and are able to reach speeds of up to 43 miles per hour, or 70 kilometers per hour. Indeed, a single stride made by this bird can be 10 to 16 feet long, or 3 to 5 meters long. In addition to its obviously long neck, the ostrich has prominent eyes and sweeping eyelashes. Ostriches have the largest eye of any land animal. An ostrich's eye is nearly two inches, or five centimeters, across. The long neck of the ostrich and excellent vision enable it to see great distances. This, of course, is a great benefit in keeping an eye out for predators. Ostriches have unique feathers that are loose, soft, and smooth, giving them a shaggy look. Adult male ostriches are black with white wings and tail feathers, while immature birds and adult females have brownish-gray feathers. Ostriches are omnivores. Their diet varies depending on food available in their habitat. They primarily eat plants, but also eat insects, snakes, lizards, and rodents. They are able to consume things that other animals cannot digest because they have tough intestines that absorb as many nutrients as possible. Ostriches also swallow sand, pebbles, and small stones that help grind up the food in their gizzard. Since they eat a lot of plants, ostriches do not need to drink water. However, they may drink water at a water hole. The dominant ostrich hen mates with the territorial male, and they share the task of incubating the eggs and caring for the chicks. The territorial male is polygamous and may mate with other females. The other females may also mate with wandering males. The other females lay eggs in the same nest as the dominant hen's eggs. The nest is a shallow depression scratched in the dirt by the male. The incubation period is about 42 to 46 days. When they hatch, the chicks are about the size of barnyard chickens, but they grow at a rate of about one foot per month. Chicks will start to leave the nest with their parents a few days after hatching. By four months, they start to show their adult plumage, and by six months, they are about the size of their parents. The southern ground hornbill is one of two species of ground hornbill which are both found solely within the African continent. The other species is the Abyssinian hornbill. The southern ground hornbill is the largest species of hornbill worldwide. The southern ground hornbill is characterized by black coloration and vivid red patches of bare skin on the face and throat yellow in juvenile birds. 
These are generally believed to keep dust out of the bird's eyes while they forage during the dry season. The white tips of the wings, primary feathers, seen in flight are another diagnostic characteristic. The beak is black and straight and presents a cask, more developed in males. Females are smaller and have violet-blue skin on their throats. Juveniles to six years old lack the prominent red pouch but have a duller patch of gray in its place. Southern ground hornbills are found from northern Namibia and Angola to northern South Africa and southern Zimbabwe to Burundi and Kenya. They require a savanna habitat with large trees for nesting and dense but short grass for foraging. Southern ground hornbills do not migrate. They live in groups of five to ten individuals, including adults and juveniles. These groups occupy and defend large territories against neighboring groups and often chase each other in aerial pursuits. Southern ground hornbills are active during the day. At night, they roost in trees. They forage on the ground, walking slowly in search of food. They will form groups to hunt difficult prey such as snakes. Southern ground hornbills are monogamous and form long-lasting pair bonds. Each breeding pair is always assisted by at least two other birds, a behavior known as cooperative breeding. The mating season usually lasts between September and December. Southern ground hornbills nest in deep hollows in very old trees or in cliffs. Their nest is lined with dry leaves and grasses. The female lays one to three white eggs, but only one chick is raised. The eggs are incubated 40 to 45 days by a female, and during this time she is fed by group members. The period of parental dependence following an 85-day fledgling period is between one and two years, depending on climatic conditions before the young are independent of parents and helpers, which is the longest of any bird. This means that ground hornbills can normally breed successfully only every third year. This species is believed to reach reproductive maturity at six to seven years, but very few breed at this age. Fonderdecken's hornbills are found across eastern Africa from central and eastern Tanzania through Kenya and into southeastern Ethiopia and Somalia. They favor the open bush and scrubby woodlands of dry savanna and arid steppe. Fonderdecken's hornbills are active during the day, foraging for food on the ground and dropping down on prey from perches above. They feed mainly on insects, including grasshoppers, locusts, beetles and their larvae, termites, and ants. They will also go for snails, mice, nesting birds, lizards, and tree frogs, and they forage for berries and seeds. We can see that this individual is trying to crack a very tough beetle. On the savannas of East Africa, Fonderdecken's hornbills have established a mutually beneficial relationship with the dwarf mongoose, Africa's smallest carnivore. The tiny mammals flush out insects for the hornbills to eat, while the hornbills warn of approaching predators, allowing the mongooses to focus much more intently on their feeding. Within their ecosystem, Fonderdecken's hornbills help keep insect populations in check and also help to spread seeds through their droppings. Male and female Fonderdecken's hornbills can be told apart by their bills. Males have very distinctive red or orange and ivory two-tone bills, while females have all black bills. Fonderdecken's hornbills nest in tree cavities. When a female is ready to lay eggs, she and her mate seal her into the nest cavity. They partially close up the entrance of the nest with a mixture of mud, droppings, and food items, 
such as fruit pulp, until the female can barely fit through and enter the nest. Once on the nest, the male continues to seal her in, and she also assists from the inside using food and feces until only a narrow slit remains. For the next two months, the male provides her, and the chicks once they hatch, with all of her meals. She will lay two to four eggs, incubate them, and then care for the chicks once they hatch. After about three weeks with her chicks, the female breaks out of the nest cavity and seals it back up, leaving the chicks inside. She and her mate continue to feed the offspring for another three weeks or so until they are large enough and strong enough to break out as well. Gray-crowned cranes are every bit as majestic as their name suggests. One of 15 crane species, these long-legged birds have gray bodies, white wings with brown and gold feathers, white cheeks, and bright red gular sacs underneath their chins. Most strikingly, a spray of stiff golden feathers forms a crown around their heads. Unfortunately, their distinctions have also put gray-crowned cranes at risk. Considered status symbols among the wealthy, these birds are being captured and illegally sold in large numbers. That and other threats have prompted the International Union for Conservation of Nature to list the gray-crowned crane as endangered. Gray-crowned cranes can be found in mixed wetland, grassland habitats in eastern and southern Africa, with the largest remaining populations in Kenya, Uganda, Zambia, and South Africa. They forage for grass seeds, small toads, insects, and other invertebrates. Once they meet their mates, gray-crowned cranes are monogamous. Couples dance together and preen one another's necks, which helps strengthen their bond. Great crown cranes are also highly territorial during the breeding season, which usually takes place in the rainy months when wetlands are less accessible to predators. Moving away from the flock, breeding couples build nests in or along the edges of the wetlands, where they lay up to four eggs at a time. The marabou stork is a huge, macabre-looking stork with a massive dagger-like bill and naked pink head and neck that appear severely sunburned. A white ruff and loose inflatable skin on the neck add to its odd appearance. It soars effortlessly at great heights searching for food. Note its white belly in flight. Marabous are equally content in wetlands or in dry bush. They are most frequently encountered lurking near carrion, as they attend kills of major predators and will opportunistically snatch scraps. They also readily scavenge around humans and waste dumps. Marabou storks are monogamous and form strong pair bonds that last for life. They breed in colonies, starting during the dry season when food is more readily available as the pools shrink. The female lays two to three eggs, which hatch after an incubation period of 30 days. At hatching, the chicks are fed by both parents and fledged between 13 to 15 weeks of age. They remain with the parents for about another four months and reach reproductive maturity at four years of age. The black-bellied bustard is a lithe, medium-sized bustard with black daubs on a mostly tan-colored back. The male has a black belly, neck stripe, throat, and face patch. The female is uniform buff brown from the belly to the head. In flight, both sexes have white windows in the wings. Singles and pairs inhabit tall grassland and grassy savanna. Its strange display involves the male stretching his neck and making a frog-like quirk croak and, as he retracts his head to the shoulders, follows with a grrr growl and champagne cork-like pop while his head lifts again. He also performs an aerial display with the wings held back rigidly and a puffed throat exposed. 
Cory bustards are the world's heaviest flying birds. They live in grasslands and savannas in eastern and southern Africa. Male Cory bustards range in weight from 24 to 42 pounds, that's 11 to 19 kilograms, and females are roughly half the size of the males. They stand about 5 feet tall, or 1.5 meters. Cory bustards are omnivorous birds, although they tend to be more carnivorous than other species of bustards. Insects form a large portion of their diet, especially when they are chicks. They also eat a variety of small mammals, lizards, snakes, seeds, and berries. They have been observed eating carrion. A male Cory bustard will mate with more than one female. Mating lasts no more than a few seconds. Once over, the male leaves and resumes displaying to attract another female. He plays no part in incubation or in the rearing of chicks. As with all bustards, the clutch of one to two eggs is laid on the ground in a shallow scrape the female has made. The white-bellied bustard is a small, tawny-backed bustard with a reddish base to the bill and a strongly demarcated white belly. The male has a blue-gray neck and dark facial markings. Small groups strut through open grassland and bush at elevations below 2,000 meters, or about 7,000 feet. Female white-bellied bustards strongly resemble female black-bellied bustards. But the white-bellied female has a shorter neck and legs and white rather than black foreparts to the underwing. This species is usually seen in pairs or family groups, as young stay with their parents much longer than those of other bustards in the region. Greater flamingos, seen here, are likely to be the only tall pink bird in any given locality. They also have long, lean, curved necks and black-tipped bills with a distinctive downward bend. Flamingos favor environments such as estuaries and saline or alkaline lakes. However, they really thrive on the extensive mudflats characteristic of these areas. It is here that they breed and feed. The bent bills allow them to feed on small organisms, plankton, tiny fish, fly larvae, and similar such organisms. In muddy flats or shallow water, they use their long legs and webbed feet to stir up the bottom. Then they bury their bills, or even their entire heads, and suck up both mud and water to access the tasty morsels within. Seen here is the smallest flamingo in the world, the lesser flamingo. Note its dark bill and red legs, which are characteristic of this species. Note that the shrimp-like crustaceans, upon which flamingos feed, are responsible for their pink color. Flamingos live and feed in groups called flocks or colonies. They find safety in numbers, which helps to protect individual birds from predators while their heads are down in the mud. Greater flamingos also breed while gathered in groups. Once mating is completed, a pair takes turns incubating their single egg. Young flamingos are born gray and white and do not turn pink for two years. In years when wetlands and pools are dry and food scarce, Flamingos may not breed. Fisher's lovebird is a brightly colored small parrot, named after Gustav Fischer. It was discovered in the 19th century. Females and males are identical in appearance and do not exhibit sexual dimorphism. They have a green back, chest, and wings. 
The bird's neck is golden yellow to orange color, which develops into a deeper orange red on its face. The lovebird's beak is red and the top of its head is olive green. It may also have blue or purple colored plumage on the tail. The remainder of the body is a vibrant green. The ring-necked dove is a widespread and often abundant dove species from Africa. Its name is derived from the semi-color of black feathers on the lower nape, a feature shared with a number of Streptopelia species. Like all doves, they depend on surface water. They congregate in large flocks at water holes in dry regions to both drink and bathe. Ring-necked doves are monogamous birds that form pairs. Males attract a female by flapping up a steep gradient before spiraling down with wings and tail spread out. The Namaqua dove is a tiny, long-tailed dove that is dark above and pale below. The male has a black mask and colorful bill. The female has a plain head and dark bill. In flight, the wings are bright rufous. Found in a variety of dry, open habitats at low and middle elevations, its voice is a long, two-parted hoo-oo, which is repeated sometimes endlessly. It is distinguished from all other doves in its range by both its small size and long tail. The Namaqua dove builds a stick nest in a bush. It lays two white eggs, which are incubated for 16 days in typical pigeon fashion, with the female sitting at night and early morning and the male sitting from mid-morning until late afternoon. The fork-tailed drongo is a red-eyed, all-black, upright bird with a narrow tail that splays out into a deep fork. Pairs and singles are found in a variety of wooded and open country, avoiding forest interior. They are often found in the vicinity of wild and domestic large mammals, hawking insects that they flush up. The fork-tailed drongo's breeding season can start as early as February and last until November. The number of broods range from two to three per year. The yellow-fronted canary is common across most of its range, especially in eastern Africa, from Uganda and Kenya to eastern South Africa, and separately in Gambia and coastal Senegal. It nests in trees, laying three or four eggs in a compact cup nest. The black-faced canary is a small seed-eater with a conical bill and forked tail. The upper parts are olive green and the underparts pale yellow. Both sexes have a strong yellow eyebrow. It occurs in Miombo and other moist savanna, forest edge, as well as cultivated areas. The song consists of higher introductory notes followed by lower rattling trills. Similar to the western citril, but has a shorter and less pointed bill. Males also have a slightly larger black face patch that is more clearly defined, and females have more streaking below. The southern masked weaver has a red eye and a lightly streaked green back and pink brown legs. The breeding male has a black face with a narrow black band on the forehead above the bill. By comparison, the female, seen here, and the juvenile are dull. The yellow-throated longclaw is a large pipit-like bird with golden yellow underparts and eyebrow and a circular broad necklace emphasizing the yellow throat. The upper parts are subdued streaky brown and the outer tail corners are white, which is a key feature in flight. They are named for their unusually long, 
hind claws, which are thought to help in walking on grass. Long claws in general are ground nesters, laying up to four speckled eggs. The northern white-crowned shrike is a shrike found in dry thornbush, semi-desert, and open acacia woodland in East Africa from southeastern South Sudan and southern Ethiopia to Tanzania. The northern white-crowned shrike is gregarious, occurring in groups of up to 12 birds. The neat, thick-walled cup nest is constructed from grass and spider webs and a horizontal tree fork 4 to 6 meters, that is, about 14 to 20 feet above the ground. The two to four white or lilac eggs are blotched with gray, purple, or brown. It is likely that cooperative breeding occurs, given the gregarious habits of this species and the known cooperative breeding of the closely related southern white crown shrike. The magpie shrike is a bulky black shrike with scattered white patches on the shoulders and wings and a very long floppy tail. The sexes have differently colored flanks, females white, males black. Small groups of three to ten sit upright on perches one to five meters, that is about three to seventeen feet high, in grassy open savanna and sparse broadleaf woodland. Perch and weight predators, they drop onto insect and small vertebrate prey and often move locally into recently burned areas to forage. The magpie shrike is a gregarious species and usually occurs in noisy groups of about a dozen birds occupying a home range of several tens of hectares. It may associate with other birds such as the white-headed buffalo weaver. This species nests cooperatively during the rainy season, and their breeding territory is about three hectares and defended from other groups. Displays in the breeding season include bowing, tail flicking, wing raising, and whistling. The female sometimes calls from the nest and the male brings her food. The two birds may also perform duets. The white-headed buffalo weaver is a large, chunky, beautiful, and distinctive weaver found in a variety of open and savanna habitats. The buffalo part of its name derives from its habit of following the African Cape buffalo and feeding on disturbed insects. Two subspecies are recognized. Like most weavers, the white-headed buffalo weaver is a gregarious bird, which forages on the ground for insects, especially beetles and butterflies, fruits and seeds, often in company with starlings. Breeding and roosting is done in groups and can be very defensive against intruders, usually by making noise. Altercations are rarely fatal and usually vocal. The silverbird is an old-world flycatcher native to eastern Africa, from Sudan to Tanzania. The species is the only member of the genus Empidornis. A stunning flycatcher, the silverbird occurs in areas west of the Rift Valley. Adult silverbirds are silvery gray above and tawny orange below. Juveniles have black-bordered tawny spots on underparts and mottled buff and black on throats and breasts. The chestnut-bellied sand grouse is a plump and dove-like bird with a pointed tail. Males are sandy brown with a thin black breastband and solid chestnut belly. Females are sandy brown with black bars on the back and a mottled neck. Flight is fast and direct, often seen in flocks. It inhabits semi-desert, dry plains, and sparsely vegetated scrubland. 
Sand grouses in general are monogamous. The breeding season usually coincides with a crop of seeds after the local rainy season, and at this time the feeding flocks tend to break up into pairs. The nesting site is a slight depression in the ground, sometimes lined with a few pieces of dry foliage. The Coquille Franklin is a small, beautifully patterned Franklin. Males have a rufous head, while females have an elaborately striped head, and both sexes show dark barring on the belly. It is found on the ground in areas with thick grass, ranging from pure grassland to lush woodland. This is a generally shy and retiring species that sometimes sits out boldly when calling. It gives two distinct calls, a repeated coqui and a short series of cackling notes. Smaller than most other Franklins, and bigger than quail and the button quail. Its plumage pattern is distinctive when seen well. Notably, it mainly occurs in Africa's southern half. The yellow-throated sand grouse is a dumpy, short-legged, pigeon-like bird that shuffles awkwardly on the ground and flies in a fast and direct manner. Larger than other African sand grouse, it has a distinctive black-bordered yellow throat in the male and heavy mottling and a plain face in the female. Pairs or small groups prefer grasslands, open savanna, and farmlands at middle altitudes, avoiding semi-desert and desert areas. They fly less frequently than other sand grouse and are often detected by their distinctive call, a croaky, guttural, karek, kokor, owl. These birds are solitary nesters, meaning that their nests are situated at least a hundred meters or 330 feet apart. Their nest is usually a shallow depression on the ground, typically lined with weed stems and grass, situated under or across a shrub. Once the eggs hatch, the chicks are jointly cared for by the parents. The white-browed kukul is native to eastern and southern Africa and the southwestern part of the Arabian Peninsula. Its range includes Angola, Botswana, Burundi, Congo Democratic Republic of the Congo, Djibouti, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi, Namibia, Rwanda, Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia, and Zimbabwe in Africa, as well as Saudi Arabia and Yemen. It is a common species with a very wide range, and the International Union for Conservation of Nature has listed it as a least concerned species. Also called the lark-heeled cuckoo, it is notable that this species is classified in the cuckoo family, Cuculidae. The secretary bird is a raptor of sub-Saharan Africa savannas, grasslands, and shrublands. Standing about 4 feet tall, or 1.2 meters, this species primarily moves about on foot. They fly only when necessary, such as to reach their nest in the trees and for courtship displays. Secretary birds and caracaras are the only two birds of prey that hunt on the ground instead of from the air. Secretary birds' diet consists of small rodents, amphibians, and reptiles. Indeed, snakes are a favorite meal of secretary birds, and, in fact, the bird's scientific name, Sagittarius serpentarius, means the archer of snakes. If a snake tries striking a secretary bird, it usually ends up with a mouthful of feathers from the bird's almost seven-foot wingspan, which is used as a distraction. Secretary birds mate for life. Mating displays take place both in the air and on the ground. The female usually lays three blue-green eggs, which both parents incubate. When the eggs hatch after about 50 days, both parents care for the chicks, including feeding them regurgitated prey. The young birds fledge after about three months. 
True to the first part of its name, the African fish eagle is distributed far and wide throughout Africa, the world's second largest continent. This eagle is relatively common and widespread in a variety of habitats south of the Sahara Desert. And true to the second part of its name, the African fish eagle is very fond of eating fish. As one would expect, the African fish eagle is generally found living next to bodies of water of almost any type and size. This beautiful bird of prey can be seen perched on trees or other prominent sites near ponds, estuaries, lakes, rivers, streams, coastal waters, and wetlands. African fish eagles build large nests out of sticks and branches, usually in a tree or on a cliff. The female lays one to four eggs, but usually just two. Incubation is mainly the female's job. For about 45 days, she spends most of her time sitting on her eggs to keep them at a safe temperature. Once the chicks hatch, the female continues her role as the primary caregiver to her young. She is responsible for feeding her nestlings, while it is the male's job to go out and find food for himself and his family. The greater kestrel is a large pale brown kestrel. Its gray tail has broad black bands and the back is heavily marked with black. Found in semi-desert, grassland, and arid savanna, it often perches conspicuously in an isolated tree. The greater kestrel feeds mainly on invertebrates, such as grasshoppers, termites, beetles, and solifugids. It also takes lizards and sometimes small birds, mammals, and snakes. Greater kestrels use the old nest of another bird for breeding, such as that of a cape crow or pied crow. Two to seven eggs are laid, with three or four being most common. They are incubated for 22 to 23 days, mainly by the female. The young birds fledge after 30 to 34 days and remain dependent on their parents for at least 26 days longer. The dark chanting goshawk is found throughout sub-Saharan Africa. There it makes its home in different habitat types, but seems to prefer moist wooded savanna. It avoids areas that are very arid or very wet. This raptor has a long list of animals on its menu. It feeds mostly on vertebrates, both big and small. It most often consumes lizards and small snakes, but it will also take birds that can be quite large, such as helmeted guinea fowl and hornbills. It will also prey on mammals, such as dwarf mongooses, squirrels, and mice. The dark chanting goshawk has also been known to scavenge on carrion. When breeding season begins, dark chanting goshawks engage in courtship displays that involve chanting from tops of trees and magnificent aerial displays. The female will lay one to two eggs and she will be responsible for incubating and otherwise caring for them for the following 36 or so days. When the eggs hatch, the chicks grow quickly and, after around 50 days or less, they will be ready to fly from the nest for the first time. The gray kestrel is found throughout a large area within sub-Saharan Africa. It makes its home in moist palm savanna and woodland areas, as well as in openings in secondary and primary forest. This kestrel, like many other kestrel species, feeds primarily on rodents, small birds, bats, small reptiles, frogs, insects, and other invertebrates. Like most species, the gray kestrel doesn't build its own nest. It might nest in holes in trees, or, more commonly, it chooses to lay its eggs in the cavities of large stick nests built by hammer cops, which are medium-sized wading birds that we will talk about later. The tawny eagle is a large bird of prey. Its heavily feathered legs illustrate it to be a member of the subfamily Aquilinae, 
also known as booted eagles. Throughout its range, it favors open dry habitats, such as semi-deserts, desert steppes, or savanna plains. While other species within the Aquila will opportunistically scavenge, the tawny eagle makes a regular habit of this. Indeed, more routinely than almost any other raptor species, the tawny eagle regularly engages in kleptoparasitism of other birds of prey. It appears that the tawny eagle is a species that pairs for life. Nests are typically located at the top of a tree. The one to three laid eggs are incubated by the female for 40 to 44 days. Although the chick's first flight attempts will occur at 7 to 10 weeks, it is fully grown and capable of fledging the nest after about 10 to 12 weeks. The African pygmy falcon spends its time in open, semi-arid landscapes with sparse ground cover and scattered trees, particularly camel thorns, in arid grasslands. This species roosts and nests on the nests of other birds, particularly weaver species, including social weaver and white-headed buffalo weaver. This small raptor, about the size of a shrike, is an accomplished hunter. Though it can take prey on the wing, particularly small birds, it prefers to wait on a perch and pounce on prey from above. The female lays from two to three eggs. These are incubated for around a month. Though both sexes incubate the eggs, the female's share of the work is larger. Meanwhile, the male is responsible for bringing food to the female and the nestlings. The nestlings fledge after about 30 days. The auger buzzard is native to the eastern coast of Africa spanning from Ethiopia to Zimbabwe, as well as a small region on the west coast between Angola and Namibia. They reside within a variety of habitats, including forests, deserts, shrublands, grasslands, and mountainous regions. Auger buzzards are carnivorous, preying mainly on small terrestrial vertebrates and insects. Both parents are fully invested in raising their young. Females will lay one to three eggs per year, but only raise one hatchling. The fledgling leaves the nest at about 70 days of age. The Marshall Eagle is a majestic bird of prey found throughout much of sub-Saharan Africa. It can be found in over 40 countries in this region. The Marshall Eagle normally inhabits open grasslands that are scattered with large trees. It can also be found in scrubby, more arid areas, as well as wooded savannas or riparian forests. The Marshall Eagle is fully equipped to hunt a wide variety of prey. It uses its strong feet and sharp talons to catch medium-sized mammals, birds, and reptiles. Some animals on the Marshall Eagle's menu include guinea fowl, franklins, bustard, flamingo, hornbills, ostrich chicks, monitor lizards, monkeys, mongoose, dictics, hares, hyraxes, and steenbucks. During breeding, the female and male will engage in simple courtship displays, such as circling together in the sky or vocalizing to one another from a perch. The female usually lays only one egg. The female tends to most of the incubation duties, which lasts about 50 days. The hatchling requires a great deal of care from its parents. After about 100 days, it will be ready to fly for the first time and thus fledge. However, even after it is flying, the Marshall Eagle fledgling will still rely on its parents to teach it how to hunt and avoid danger. It will remain in its parents' territory for 8 to 12 months 
before heading out on its own. The crowned eagle, also known as the African crowned eagle or crowned hawk eagle, is a large bird of prey found in sub-Saharan Africa. In southern Africa, it is restricted to eastern areas. Its preferred habitats are principally riparian woodlands and various forests. The crowned eagle is the only extant member of the genus Stephanoides. A second species, the Malagasy crowned eagle, became extinct after humans settled on Madagascar. Crowned eagles are found only in Africa. In East Africa, their range extends from central Ethiopia to Uganda, forested parts of Kenya, and Tanzania to as far south as eastern South Africa. Crowned eagles live in pairs. They are largely sedentary and usually inhabit a fixed territory throughout the year. Crowned eagles are monogamous. Pairs usually breed once every two years. Long-crested eagles inhabit wooded areas, particularly in the vicinity of marshes, wetlands, and rivers. Most of their diet is rodents. Other prey include small birds, lizards, arthropods, and fish, and they are also known to eat wild figs and mulberries. Pears are monogamous. The nest is built out of sticks and placed in a tree close to the edge of a forested area. The female lays one to two eggs, which are incubated for 42 days. Fledging takes 53 to 58 days. The Batalur is a small eagle of Africa and Arabia, belonging to the subfamily Circetini, the serpent eagles, of the family Asipitridae. The name Batalur, French for tumbler, comes from the bird's distinctive aerial acrobatics. One of the most familiar birds of African skies, it is usually on the wing, often doing somersaults in the air. The Batalur hunts open country for small mammals, reptiles, eggs, grasshoppers, and carrion. It seems to favor eating snakes. A leaf-lined stick nest is built in a low spreading tree. The clutch is probably a single egg. The female incubates for 40 days or more. The young do not fledge until three or four months after hatching. Maturity is reached in the fifth or sixth year. Juvenile batalures have longer tail and wing feathers than their parents. Young eagles need these longer feathers when they are first learning to fly, as they give them more stability and control in the air. The red-winged lark is a large lark with a long, strong bill and a long tail. Its back is scaly looking and the underparts are pale with a black mark on each side of the breast. The wings look rufous in flight. It is found very locally in dry and open savanna. The red-winged lark has a patchy but quite extensive range in equatorial eastern Africa. It occurs within Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda, and its estimated global extent of occurrence is 660,000 square kilometer. Its total population has yet to be quantified, but is believed to be quite large. Its natural habitat is savanna, in tropical to subtropical dry open lowland. The red-capped lark is a small passerine bird. This lark breeds in the highlands of eastern Africa, southwards from Ethiopia, 
and Somaliland. In the south, its range stretches across the continent to Angola and south to the Cape in South Africa. The Pied Avocet is a large black and white wader in the Avocet and Stilt family, Recurvarostridae. They breed in temperate Europe and across the Palearctic to Central Asia, then on to the Russian Far East. It is a migratory species and most winter in Africa or Southern Asia. Notably, some remain to winter in the mildest parts of their range, for example, in southern Spain and southern England. The Pied Avocet is one of the species to which the Agreement on the Conservation of African Eurasian Migratory Waterbirds applies. The Red Knobbed Coot, or Crested Coot, is a member of the Rail and Crake Bird family, the Relidae. It is a resident breeder across much of Africa and in southernmost Spain on freshwater lakes and ponds. It builds a nest of dead reeds near the water's edge or, more commonly afloat, laying about eight eggs. More eggs may be laid if favorable conditions exist. Famously, or perhaps infamously, its behavior towards its own young is so aggressive that only a few are likely to survive to adulthood. The habits of the red knobbed coot are practically identical to those of the Eurasian coot. It is much less secretive than most of the rail family. Where it is undisturbed, it is likely to bully any intruder, even large birds such as Egyptian geese, if they do not defy its challenges. Saddle-billed storks live throughout tropical Africa south of the Sahara, mainly in open or semi-arid country near sources of water. They forage and nest along rivers, lake shores, floodplains, and swamps. Like most storks, saddle-billed storks are primarily solitary birds. If they gather in groups at all, the groups are small. They forage alone or in pairs and pairs nest alone. Pairs are territorial and will chase other pairs out of their home range. Saddle-billed storks primarily eat fish, but they also feed upon frogs, small reptiles, small mammals, some mollusks, and probably insects. They stand very still in open water or walk about in reeds and shallow water stabbing repeatedly and sometimes trying to stir up prey with their feet. They swallow their prey whole and drink water after swallowing. Pears are probably bonded for life. They build nests singly, not in colonies. They construct a platform of sticks in trees, usually thorny acacias, near water. Pears feed together near their nests. Females lay anywhere from one to five eggs, usually two to three. The pair takes turns sitting on the eggs during the incubation period, which is estimated to be from 30 to 35 days. Parents care for the chicks for about the first 45 days of life. They regurgitate food into the nest for the chicks and dribble water on them. As the chicks get older, they may take fish directly from a parent's beak. At 3.5 months old, the chicks are largely independent. They fledge somewhere around 70 to 100 days. Occurring on five different continents, including Europe, North America, South America, Asia, and Africa, the black-winged stilt is a very widely distributed species. Black-winged stilts feed mainly on aquatic insects, but will also take mollusks and crustaceans. As with other activities, black-winged stilts nest in small colonies, Within these, the mated pairs strongly defend their individual territories. The nest may be anything from a simple, shallow scrape on the ground to a mound of vegetation placed in or near the water. Both sexes incubate the eggs and look after the young.
Ripple's vulture ranges through a number of countries and regions including southwestern Mauritania and southern Arabia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Senegal, Gambia and Mali, Sudan and Ethiopia. It can also be found in parts of Kenya, Tanzania and Mozambique. When Ripple's vulture isn't flying and searching for food, it spends a large amount of time eating. It is a very gregarious or sociable species and can be found in large numbers at kills, usually mixing with other vulture species. One of the vulture species with which Ripple's vulture mixes is the lapid-faced vulture, seen here with the red face. Indeed, the lapid-faced vulture is a massive vulture with a bullish naked square head, a bulky bluish-yellow beak, and wrinkled loose skin, or lapids, on the face. Adults have a brown and white streaked chest and puffy white leggings, while immatures are all brown. In flight, the very broad wings, white leggings, and small white lines at the front of the wing are diagnostic. The lapid-faced vulture is thought to be the most powerful vulture in Africa. Though largely a scavenging bird, this large vulture also hunts down some prey, including small mammals, reptiles, fish, and even birds, including baby flamingos. And here we see marabou storks mixing with both ripples vultures and the lapid-faced vultures. Vultures and other carrion eaters function as nature's cleanup crew, often consuming organisms in dead and decaying states. This consumption of dead animals is, of course, a benefit to the environment, in that diseases that might otherwise proliferate from the dead carcasses are eliminated by their being consumed. Vultures are opportunistic feeders and when prey is abundant will gorge themselves until their crop is full, after which they will sit in half-torpid state to digest their meals. Most species have powerful hooked beaks that are used to tear hide, muscle, and bone from carcasses. The unfeathered bald head of many vulture species is thought to help keep it clean from all the blood and fluids that would otherwise be picked up while feeding on carcasses. In nesting, Old World vultures build large platform nests made out of sticks. These are located in trees or on cliffs. They may use the same nest for several years, taking turns sitting while their partner finds food. The majority of Old World vultures incubate a single egg at a time. The gray-backed fiscal is a large, long-tailed gray, black, and white shrike. The male has completely white underparts while the female can show a small rufous flank patch. Large white patches at the base of the tail are conspicuous in flight. The gray-backed fiscal is a sociable bird and is often found in wooded grassland, gardens, and damp acacia scrub. Nests are built up to 10 meters, that is 33 feet, off the ground and near the trunk of the tree or on peripheral branches. The female builds a nest while the male may bring nesting material and food for the female. A clutch of about four eggs is laid. Incubation is by the female and lasts about 14 days, with the young remaining in the nest for a further 20 days. The Swahili sparrow is a passerine bird of the sparrow family Passeridae. It lives in the savanna of southern Kenya and Tanzania. Until recently, it was usually treated as a subspecies of the northern gray-headed sparrow, with which it hybridizes in southern Tanzania and possibly elsewhere. This species builds grass nests in acacia trees in dry regions and generally avoids moister coastal lowlands or uplands. Following the breeding season, they form nomadic flocks and the bill color will change from black to horn colored. 
They may nest in the proximity of northern gray-headed sparrows, but not on buildings. The striped kingfisher is a small and dainty woodland-dwelling kingfisher with powder blue tail and flight feathers, creamy collar, dark eye stripe, and streaky brown crown. Singles and pairs are inconspicuous in the mid-canopy of parkland-like savanna and woodland, preferring more arid thornveld than any other dryland kingfishers. The striped kingfisher eats mostly grasshoppers, followed by other large insects. The female lays eggs in a disused woodpecker or barbet hole. Both sexes incubate during the day, but only the female at night. The male feeds the female, but holds the prey items while the female tears off pieces. This species is usually monogamous, but polyandry has been recorded. The striped kingfisher is normally double-brooded. The malachite kingfisher is a small, gem-like wetland kingfisher. It exhibits geographical variation, with most birds having orange underparts, while in other parts of its range there is a white belly. The malachite kingfisher will sit motionless for long periods of time before plunging into the water to snatch prey such as fish. The nest is a tunnel in a sandy bank, usually over water. Both birds excavate. Most burrows incline upward before the nesting chamber is reached. Three or four clutches of three to six white eggs are placed on a litter of fish bones and disgorged pellets. The gray-headed kingfisher is a species of kingfisher that has a wide distribution from the Cape Verde Islands off the northwest coast of Africa to Mauritania, Senegal and Gambia, east to Ethiopia, Somalia, and southern Arabia, and south to South Africa. A dry country kingfisher of scrub and woodland, the gray-headed kingfisher occurs solitarily or in pairs often found near water, but unlike most kingfishers, is not aquatic. It feeds upon insects and small lizards. The gray-headed kingfisher nests in holes in steep riverbanks, and it aggressively protects its nest by repeatedly dive-bombing on foraging monitor lizards. The little bee-eater is a small, mostly grass-green bee-eater with a canary-yellow throat separated from buff underparts by a black line across the throat. Singles and pairs occupy grassy savanna and wetland edges. They often perch lower than 1.5 meters, or about 5 feet, above the ground, and dart around, hunting flying insects, then returning to the same small twig. This is an abundant species throughout its range. Indeed, there have been estimated to be between 60 to 80 million little bee-eaters. They breed in open country with bushes, preferably near water. Just as the name suggests, bee-eaters predominantly eat insects, especially bees, wasps, and hornets, who are caught in the air by sorties from an open perch. Unlike most bee-eaters, these are solitary nesters, making a tunnel in sandy banks or sometimes in the entrance to an aardvark den. They lay four to six spherical white eggs. Both the male and female take care of the eggs. Lined up on a tree branch, these birds roost communally. The wattled lapwing is a large brownish lapwing endowed with yellow wattles that have distinctive fleshy red bases. The juvenile has smaller wattles. Pairs or small groups prefer marshes and wet grasslands, as well as the flooded edges of lakes, pans, and seeps. 
It can also be found in dry savanna, cropped and burnt grasslands, or cultivated fields. The wattled lapwing is a conspicuous and unmistakable bird. This is a bird species known for its characteristic loud alarm call, often compared to the words, Did we do it? This species is a common breeder in wet, lowland habitats, especially damp grassland. It often feeds in drier habitats, such as golf courses, picking insects and other invertebrates from the ground. It lays three or four eggs on a ground scrape. The crowned lapwing is a large, alert-looking, white-bellied, brown lapwing with a distinctive white halo around the dark crown. The immature is duller, but it retains a distinctive crown pattern. Small groups occupy open, dry country, preferring cropped and recently burned grasslands, where they forage for termites, ants, and other invertebrates commonly resident, but it also disperses when conditions become unfavorable. Egg-laying is timed to precede the rainy season, and most incubating is done by the female. The male assists only on hot days when he either incubates or shades the nest. The spur-winged lapwing is a medium-large plover, often locally abundant, noisy, and easy to identify. Its plumage is a striking combination of black, white, and brown. This species has a preference for marshes and similar freshwater wetland habitats. It lays four blotchy, yellowish eggs on a ground scrape. The spur-winged lapwing is known to sometimes use its wing claws in an attack on animals and, rarely, people who get too close to the bird's exposed offspring. The three-banded plover is a small, dark plover of freshwater and brackish wetlands, with one white and two black breast bands and a broad white forehead. The juveniles have less distinct breast bands. It moves busily along wetland edges, foraging for insects by pecking in the mud and on the water's surface. This species is often seen as single individuals, but it will form small flocks. It hunts by sight for insects, worms, and other invertebrates. The three-banded plover's nest is a bare scrape on shingle. Egg-laying occurs from March to June in the tropics, but mainly, over 70%, from July to October, that is, late winter to early spring, in southern Africa. Here in the Serengeti, the three-banded plover is often encountered near water holes. The superb starling is a small but brightly colored bird. The head is all black with a pale yellow eye and black beak. The neck, breast, back, wings, and tail are covered with iridescent blue-green feathers. A thin white stripe separates the glossy blue breast from a red-orange belly. The undertail coverts and wing linings are white. The legs are black. Immature birds have dull coloring lack of the breast band, and have darker eyes. The superb starling is a very capable flyer. The shape of its wings help it to fly swiftly and maneuver quickly. Such agility is helpful in woodlands or to escape from a predator. Indeed, the habitat of the superb starling is dry woodlands and forests, thorn and acacia woodland, scrub grasslands, and around human-inhabited areas such as agricultural fields and urban and suburban areas. The diet of the superb starling consists of insects, berries, fruit, and seeds. Between two to five, 
dark blue-green eggs are laid at a time. After 13 to 15 days of incubation, the young hatch. Chicks receive alloparental care, meaning that both parents and additional members of the group care for the chicks. Ripple's starling is a large, fairly long-tailed, dark, and glossy starling. While sometimes it appears black, in good light it shows its iridescence that is mostly purple with a green wing and a maroon belly. It is found in moist savanna, woodland, gardens, and cultivated areas, often on the ground, typically in small flocks. A member of the family Sternidae, Ripple's starling occurs in Burundi, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, Chad, Tanzania, and Uganda. The bare-faced go-away bird is an unusual gray taraco with a bushy crest and a mostly white head and breast. Found in moist savanna, woodland, shrubby cultivation, and gardens, it usually occurs in small groups. It is loud and vocal. The calls are a single hollow kiao and a maniacal series of cackles and whines given by multiple birds in chorus. The bare-faced go-away bird is found in two disjunct areas in Africa, one in Ethiopia and the other in Burundi, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Kenya, Malawi, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia. It occurs in open woodland, thickets, and in cultivation with scattered trees. This species primarily eats fruits, leaf buds, and seeds. Like other turacos, the bare-faced go-away bird lays two to three greenish-white eggs each mating season. Nests are often built in tall acacia trees. Shalos turaco is a spectacular green-crested turaco. It shows large crimson wing patches in flight. Found in forest and dense woodland, it acts like a typical turaco, bouncing through the trees and flying occasionally with short bursts of wing beats and long glides. The call is a gruff, accelerating series of cow notes. Shallows to Roccos consume mainly fruit and other plant matter while eating a more insect-based diet as chicks. These birds are territorial of their nesting site. Solitary monogamous pairs will nest and care for their offspring, sharing incubation duties that will last from 20 to 22 days. Their clutch generally only consists of two eggs laid in a platform nest high in the forest canopy. Within two to three weeks, the chicks are strong enough to climb outside the nest and will start flying after another one to two weeks. The eastern plantain eater is an unusual gray taraco with a long tail and bushy crest. White bars in the outer wing and white sides to the tail are conspicuous in floppy flight. Found in savanna, woodland, shrubby cultivation, and gardens, it usually occurs in small groups. The species is loud and vocal. The call is a series of yelps that accelerate and become louder, usually in a wild duet or chorus. This species is a resident breeder in open woodland habitats in tropical East Africa. It lays two or three eggs in a tree platform nest. Egyptian geese, which are more closely related to shell ducks than other geese, are indigenous to the eastern and southern parts of Africa. Egyptian geese can be found in open meadows and agricultural fields near rivers, ponds, and other wetlands. Curiously, Egyptian geese are very capable of nesting well away from the water. 
Adults have been known to walk their young for over a kilometer, or about 0.6 miles, to find suitable waterside location to raise them. The yellow-billed stork, sometimes also called the wood stork or wood ibis, is a large African wading stork species in the family Psychoneidae. It is widespread in regions south of the Sahara and also occurs in Madagascar. Despite their gregariousness during breeding, most individuals generally ignore each other outside nesting sites, although some hostile encounters may occur. This stork's diet is mainly comprised of small freshwater fish, which they swallow whole. Breeding is seasonal and appears to be stimulated by the peak of long, heavy rainfall and resultant flooding of shallow marshes, usually near Lake Victoria. This flooding is linked to an increase in prey fish availability, and reproduction is therefore synchronized with this peak in food availability. The African jacana is a distinctive chestnut, white, and black water bird with a sky-blue bill and enormous feet. Resident and nomadic, this species trots on the surface of water lilies and other aquatic vegetation, using its long legs and ludicrously elongated toes to prevent it from sinking. It flies weakly low over water, with legs and toes dangling behind awkwardly. The African jacana's mating system is highly unusual and is characterized by a dominant female maintaining a harem of multiple males. After egg laying, each male will raise a brood alone. With its long legs and elegant neck, the gray heron strikes a regal pose as it stands motionless in shallow water, waiting to strike at unsuspecting fish. During the breeding season, these large herons join treetop breeding colonies where they showcase their exquisite breeding plumes in courtship displays and work tirelessly to feed a nest full of chattering, insatiable chicks. The gray heron, found in Europe, Asia, and Africa, is one of three very similar herons worldwide, together with great blue heron of North America and the cocoi heron of South America. The dimorphic egret, also known as the little egret, is a species of small heron in the family Ardeidae. It is a white bird with a slender black beak, long black legs, and, in the western race, yellow feet. As an aquatic bird, it feeds in shallow water and on land, consuming a variety of small creatures. It breeds colonially, often with other species of water birds, making a platform nest of sticks in a tree, bush, or reed bed. A clutch of three to five bluish-green eggs is laid and incubated by both parents for about three weeks. The young fledge at about six weeks of age. The hammercop is a medium-sized wading bird. It is the only living species in the genus Scopus and the family Scopidae. The species and family was long thought to sit with the Psychoneiformes, but is now placed with the Pelicaniformes, and its closest relatives are thought to be the pelicans and the shoebill. The shape of its head, with a long bill and crest at the back, is reminiscent of a hammer, which has given this species its name, after the Afrikaans word for hammerhead. The hammer cop occurs in Africa, south of the Sahara, Madagascar, and coastal southwest Arabia. It requires shallow water in which to forage, and is found in all wetland habitats, including rivers, streams, seasonal pools, estuaries, reservoirs, marshes, mangroves, irrigated land, such as rice paddies, savannas, and forests. 
In Tanzania, it also has recently begun to feed on rocky shores. Note how, while crocodiles feast on a wildebeest carcass, this hammer cup boldly explores the edges of the Grumeti River, seemingly fearless of the very large reptiles about it. Females lay three to seven eggs per clutch, and males and females take turns sitting on the eggs during the incubation period, which lasts about 30 days. Both parents help feed the chicks once they hatch out. Chicks are ready to fly after about 50 days. They continue to return to the nest for two weeks after first flight and may roost together in the nest for another month before dispersing. The lesser striped swallow is a rather small, neat swallow with a distinctive burnt orange skullcap extending onto the cheeks like a helmet. It also has a rufous rump and boldly streaked underparts. The lesser striped swallow builds a bowl-shaped mud nest with a tubular entrance on the underside of a suitable structure. Three eggs constitute a typical clutch. Incubation is by the female alone for 14 to 16 days to hatching. Both parents then feed the chicks. Fledging takes another 17 to 19 days. The wire-tailed swallow is a very distinctive swallow with two long, thin feathers on its outer tail from which it gets its name. It has brilliant, glossy blue underparts and a chestnut forehead and crown that contrasts with clean white underparts. Females and juveniles have shorter tails. Found in grasslands, wetlands, open scrublands, and cultivated areas near water, this species is typically seen in singles, pairs, or sometimes small flocks. The sacred ibis is a species of ibis found near shores and marshes throughout Africa, south of the Sahara, and in Madagascar. This species thrives in large colonies near waterways throughout Africa. It inhabits wetlands such as marshes, swamps, riverbanks, floodplains, and mudflats, both coastal and inland. This species is an omnivorous scavenger that feeds on insects including grasshoppers and locusts, insect larvae, and also amphibians and other small aquatic animals such as crustaceans, frogs, fish, and small reptiles. A gregarious bird, the sacred ibis breeds and travels in large flocks. The Hadada ibis is a large, bulky gray-brown ibis with an iridescent green-purple gloss on its wings. It has a bicolored black and red bill with a white streak across the cheek under the eye. Pairs and small flocks occur in a variety of habitats, including open country, wetland marges, and forest edge. It forages on the ground, digging, probing soft soil, and picking up invertebrates with its long bill. Hadada ibises are monogamous and solitary nesters that form strong pair bonds. Both parents take part in incubating the clutch of three to four eggs. Incubation takes about 26 days. The parents feed their chicks by regurgitating food. The young usually fledge in about 33 days and become independent two months after hatching. The helmeted guinea fowl is the best known of the guinea fowl bird family, Numididae, and the only member of the genus Numida. It is native to Africa and has been widely introduced as a domesticated species into the West Indies, North America, Australia, and Europe. Helmeted guinea fowl occur mainly south of the Sahara, they are sedentary and breed in warm, fairly dry, and open habitats 
with scattered shrubs and trees such as savanna or farmland. Helmeted guinea fowl are omnivores, and their diet consists mainly of seeds, fruits, greens, snails, spiders, worms and insects, frogs, lizards, small snakes, and small mammals. The nest is a well-hidden, generally unlined scrape. The female lays a clutch of 6 to 12 eggs, which she incubates for 26 to 28 days. The chicks, called keats, are precocial at hatching and are able to leave the nest within a few hours and forage for themselves. The young fledge at around 10 to 14 days after hatching, but usually stay with their parents for 50 to 75 days before becoming independent. Darnaw's barbet is a large, conspicuous, colorful barbet with a yellow face and breast that are speckled with black. It also has a red undertail. There is considerable geographic variation in the amount of black on the crown, throat, and breastband, and in the color of the belly, which can be yellow or white. This species is found on and near the ground in savanna habitats with termite mounds, usually in pairs and small groups. The song is a phrase of three or four notes repeated over and over, often given as a duet. This species feeds on insects, fruits, and seeds. A vertical tunnel two to three feet into the ground, that is, about one-half to one meter into the ground, with a sideways and upward turn, leads to the nest chamber. The gray-headed silverbill is a small, chunky, large-billed, distinctively marked waxbill. The gray head is speckled with fine white spots. There is a sharp contrast between the brown back, the white rump, and the black tail, which is especially obvious when in flight. Found locally in both dry and moist savanna and woodland, it usually occurs in grassy areas. It also generally occurs in flocks. The gray-headed silverbill feeds mostly on grass seeds, but it has been suggested that the species also feeds on insects, which are more a source of moisture than dry seeds. The gray-headed silverbill is gregarious, moving in small flocks and often mixing with African silverbills. The bronze mannequin is a small passerine bird of the Afrotropics. This very social estriid finch is an uncommon to locally abundant bird in much of Africa south of the Sahara Desert, where it is resident. A tiny gregarious bird that feeds mainly on seeds, the bronze mannequin is an incessant nest builder that may raise up to four broods a year, given favorable circumstances. The nest is a large domed grass structure in a tree into which four to eight small white eggs are laid. Incubation takes 12 days and chicks fledge after three weeks and are independent in another three weeks. The chicks are reared on soft green seeds and insects. The blue-capped cordon blue is a slim, long-tailed, pretty waxbill. The upper parts are pale brown, and the underparts and tail are blue. The bill is pink. Males have an almost completely blue head, while females have a brown crown and back of the neck. This species is found in dry thorn savanna and thorn scrub, often in small flocks, sometimes with other wax bills, including other cordon blues. Pairs dance while holding twigs in their beaks, and film using a high-speed camera shows partners tapping their feet between 25 and 50 times a second, making a buzzing sound. The African gray flycatcher is a rather plain gray-brown flycatcher of dry country. Note the distinct dark streaks on the crown and dirty grayish underparts. It is found in dry savanna and woodland habitats, 
usually in pairs or small groups, often sitting on open perches. This species is found in Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda. The Nubian woodpecker is a mid-sized, green-backed woodpecker with intricate patterning. The crown is red in males, while it is red and white speckled black in females. This species is generally common and conspicuous in most types of savanna habitat. It usually occurs in pairs, which give a loud duet of keek notes. It forages mostly in trees, but also on the ground for ants and termites, also consuming spiders and beetles.